We're living in extraordinary times. There's a warming of relations between the Arab Gulf states and Israel. And one particular area where I think I've been very, very successful is making it clear to both Gulf leaders and to Muslim interfaith leaders that you cannot separate out Israel from Judaism. Meaning Israel is not a 70-year-old political reality for the Jewish people. Israel is at the very core. It's at the very center of Judaism, of our religion. So that, you know, asking to break out Israel from Judaism is like my asking uh, halal and sharia to be broken out from Islam. So I've been involved, you know, with the Gulf states for close to 12 years. And 10 years ago, I would hear comments, you know, rabbis, we have nothing against Jews. It's Zionists, it's Israelis. I no longer hear those comments. I no longer have that conversation. There is a recognition that if you want to engage in dialogue with the Jewish people, with the Jewish community, if you want to engage in an interreligious dialogue between Islam and Judaism, that you also need to acknowledge that Israel is very much at the core of the Jewish religion. Things are changing, and I'm not going to sit here and to represent that we have arrived at the promised land of Jewish-Muslim relations or the promised land of Gulf-Israel relations. And if I can remind our viewers that in the Torah, it took 40 years to get to the promised land. I'm not suggesting that it will take that long to get to the promised land in terms of relations between Israel and the Gulf. But the wonderful news is that the journey has begun. And it's a journey that's moving in a very positive direction today. The fact that even in the Gulf, I've been asked by different leaders from Bahrain, from Qatar, from the United Arab Emirates, to assist them in helping to build a Jewish life in the Gulf. You know, for example, in Bahrain, there's a Jewish community. It's a small Jewish community. But I've been asked by the king of Bahrain to help not only preserve the Jewish community, but to help grow the Jewish community. And what would it take to grow the Jewish community? These are all very, very positive developments along the journey. Discussions that would not have taken place 10 years ago, 5 years ago, even 2 years ago. They want peace with Israel, they want a connection with Israel. They very much desire establishing relations with Israel. Most people believe that their primary reason is the as existentialist threat coming from Iran. I would make that reason number two. Number one, what I hear from most Gulf leaders, whether it's you know, from Saudi Arabia, whether it's from Qatar and others, that the primary reason is economics. And I've heard comments that with our wealth and Israel's brain trust, with Israel's technology, we could develop together the most powerful region in the world. My work focuses on the six Gulf states. That's Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, Bahrain, Qatar, Oman, and Kuwait. I'm prepared to uh, suggest or to predict that in the year 2019, you're going to see either one or two Gulf states, Arab Gulf states, establishing relations with Israel. I do believe the first Gulf state will be the Kingdom of Bahrain. The King of Bahrain, consistently, at least since I've known the King for seven and a half years, has consistently made pronouncements in support of Israel. Uh, just last week, the Foreign Minister of Bahrain applauded Israel for cleaning out the tunnels in the north. And uh, just a few days ago, the Foreign Minister of Bahrain tweeted his support for Australia for recognizing West Jerusalem as the capital 
of the state of Israel. So you see that the kingdom of Bahrain has been very, very consistent in supporting Israel and wanting to establish diplomatic relations with Israel. In Bahrain, you have a very tiny Jewish community of 37 Jews. Uh, it's the only Gulf state that has an official synagogue. And uh, the king would very much like to see that community grow. Um, recently, we discovered there was a small Jewish congregation in the Emirates in Dubai. Um, and again, the Emirates would like to see that community grow. And then even in uh, Qatar, for example, uh, at their large university, which is a group of uh, many universities from the United States, uh, there could be between 75 to 100 university students and college professors who are Jewish. So that you see that uh, in different Gulf states, you do have tiny, small Jewish communities. Of all the six Gulf states, the one that is most public, the one that is most visible in working closely with the Israeli government is the state of Qatar. So that the money that was brought to Gaza was not only brought with the blessing of the Israeli government, it was brought at the request of the Israeli government. So Qatar and Israel would be a wonderful example of an Arab Gulf state and the state of Israel working and cooperating together. People are very uh, excited, uh, if not euphoric, very supportive of my work. Uh, when in modern Jewish history have you had the forces of the United States, specifically the Trump administration, the state of Israel, and the, Sif, and the six Gulf states all coming together, all these forces coming together. And this is a time of great opportunity and great expectations, and why I, for one, I'm very, very optimistic that we can see a very genuine, authentic, comprehensive peace for the region that will be of great benefit not only to the Israelis but to the Palestinians as well.